Listen, 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 listen. Greetings and salutations. <laughs> <clears throat> What's good? Uh, episode five of the Listen Show entitled Movies. Because today we're going to talk about how to get that grandiose, that big sound. Whether you're doing a more high energy or more ballad. Also, one more thing before I start. Um, I live by an airbase, so if you hear planes flying over, I apologize. Seems like today is plane fly, flying day, but so the first step in getting a, a big sound is having a solid foundation. The building blocks of this are having good sound selection and processing. A key of making it a movie is setting the energy. Setting the energy is what's gonna put, start to put a picture in people's mind. And then that texture and those little details are what's gonna really glue everything together. So there are some different techniques you can use to get a big, so a big sound. The first thing you can do is you can em employ layering. That is both, um, like if you're in a DAW, you're putting the same MIDI in another instrument, the exact same MIDI, so they're playing the exact same thing. Or if you're writing out your music, just putting the same chords or melody in another instrument. And when you're in a DAW, you want to choose sounds that add to each other. I learned this from my homie, David Aaron Lee, who you should follow on all his platforms, on Instagram, Facebook, whatever. And that's David, D-A-V-I-D, Aaron Lee, E-R-I-N-L-E. If you aren't already following him, follow that. Follow his pages and then follow his music pages at the Blackburn Sound. That's the, hopefully you know how to spell the, Blackburn, B-L-A-C-K-B-U-R-N, Sound. He is a very talented producer and musician. So he was, uh, he was giving me some pointers on mixing and uh, since I like to layer a lot, he was just telling me that you want to choose um, sounds that add to each other. Like if you have two pads, maybe one pad has, is very warm and has the low end, has a, good, a great sounding low end. And then maybe you choose another pad that has like, um, a very shimmery high end and then when you you want you'll probably process or eq it eq out the high end on the one that has the good low end and then the eq out some of the low end on the one that has the good high end and then when you bring them together they don't clash and get muddy but they come together and add to each other and make the record sound more full so that's the idea behind choosing sounds that add to each other, as well as just sounds that fit together, like strings and horns and like any acoustic instruments automatically fit together. Most of the time when you're doing analog synths, analog synth stuff fits together as long as you process it right. And another um, way to get more out of your layers is to use panning and stereo widening. So panning is where you take a sound and you shift it to like either your left ear or your right ear. I am str strongly against hard panning. Hard panning is where you completely take your sound and move it either all the way to the left or all the way to the right. When you pan, you have a full range of, it's like a full 360 degrees almost. So use the full range. And also there are stereo whiteners. So if you have like, again, with a pad or something like that, if you have a nice pad and you want it, you don't want it to necessarily be so mid heavy where your drums and maybe your 808 or low end is gonna be. So you take a stereo widener and it will literally just widen your, um, your, your instrument so it won't be so mid, so heavy in the middle. 
a next key is using reverb so reverb is going to give a little bit of atmosphere like you're not just without reverb everything would sound like like somebody's literally speaking directly into your ear reverb can take things and push it farther back in a mix so when when we are making music there's three dimensions you have gain which is simply where the faders are and how loud an instrument is you have panning like i said before which is uh, left to right where where an instrument can sit left to right and then you have forward and back like how direct is the sound into your ears so if you wanted to make something sound like it was farther away you would uh you would use the dry wet knob on your reverb plugin to to adjust how far away you want or in the back of the mix you want it to sound and you'll have to forgive me, I'm not really a technical mixy kind of guy. I'm kind of like the, I just like to create, honestly. Like, I just like to make music. <laughs> I, uh, I'm only, I can only mix as well as I can because the people around me, like my homie David or my homie Justice, who tells me what to do and how to make my mixes better. So you'll have to excuse the technical jargon and all that kind of stuff. Like, I'm not the best with that. So for these next plugins, I'm not really going to explain what they are, more of just how to use them because I tried to and I was struggling and I'm not going to give you guys the satisfaction of hearing me struggle with that. But I do know what they do and I do know how to use them. I just, I learned it in school and that was a long time ago. So uh, next is distortion. Distortion what it's going to do for you is give your instruments a different character and you don't again with all of this you don't slap all of these plugins on every single track you only use it to taste like if you listen to kanye west 808s and heartbreaks he puts distortion on his drums which is like the taka drum and um congas and stuff like that so distortion it messes it up but in a good way it gives it a certain character like like uh if you've ever heard any travis scott vocals he puts distortion on his vocal on his vocals from time to time the next thing that is helpful is the chorus plugin what a chorus is going to do for you is if you if you've ever heard like the beach boys or the beatles what they did back then is they would or and they still do it now but what vocalists do is they record exactly what they just recorded over and over again. And since their recordings won't be perfectly aligned with each other, the imperfections of it in it will give it a certain character. And what I usually do with chorus is I put chorus on my hi-hats because some what a chorus will do is push it farther back in the mix because chorus is a type of delay and, and a delay can work as reverb so it's i'm not gonna go through it but it it all will make sense if you want to learn about all that stuff go ahead i don't really want this to turn into like a mixing youtube series but mixing is important to what we're doing i would say go research because there are other people who can tell you better but basically what a chorus will do is it will add character and it will also push it back in the mix a little bit um, and it will make, give it a more lively feeling. I use a chorus on my hi-hats from time to time because I don't want them necessarily up front and in your face. I do want them lively and I, and I want them more heard and not felt. Next, processing and mixing is going to be what helps to give you that big sound. As a producer, you really don't have to be on a professional level with mixing, but you should know at least a little bit about mixing and mastering so you can know exactly what you want. And when other people mix a song for you or you have to send stems or something like that, your stems should already be like solid. And then a professional mixer is just gonna polish everything and put it together even more, glue it together even more, and it's really gonna shine. 
uh, I can take you through one of my mixes and maybe I'll have my friends because my friends, like I said, I'm not the technical guy. I can have some of my friends go through the mix all, as well and tell you some of the things that I do wrong and the ways they would improve on it. Um, if you want that, put it in the comments. I'll see what I can do. I say lastly, you will really know when your track has a big sound. You really know when the sound is right at the very when you're nearing the end when things start to come together and you've laid down your your main melody and your harmony and all that kind of stuff that's when everything is going to really come together and you can be and you're going to hear it in your DAW but you should always have what you're listening for or what you're what you want out of the track you're creating in your head and you want to work towards what you what you have in your head and you use your technical still your technical skills to bring out what you hear and uh like i said with the layering i've been warned before about my layering and it is a very like sober buzz tipsy drunk passed out type of thing like you really want to be careful and you want to know your sweet spot and it's the same way with being minimal minimalistic. Like I said, the key is knowing what you're what you're looking for, what you hear and knowing your sweet spot. That's the end. As always in the comments, let me know what you think. Let me know if you want me to go through a mix. Um, also, as always, listening list in the description. And thank you for listening. <laughs>